What's going on everybody? Vpop back with another video. I'm really excited. Why am I really excited? Because this video, this video right here looks even better than the last video. And the last video looked pretty sweet, if I do say so myself. Intro. Let's talk about lighting. Why are we talking about lights and not something more exciting like the new 24mm f1.4 lens you bought today? Well that's because while this lens is great and I'm using it now and I'm loving it and ooh, it's It's doing wonders. It's doing wonders right now. This lens is only compatible with the camera I have right now and the M50. And if I was to buy any more Canon EOS M lineup cameras, the lens will be only compatible with them. So if I was to buy another camera or switch to Sony or something else, the lens won't, the lens will mean nothing. The lighting, however, that's gonna go with me forever. So let's quickly talk over a few of the different lights I'm currently using. I'm using the key light, which is uh, this light over here. The key light, also known as the main light, is the, the main light that's it's lighting me. Like every other light in the background, they can go away, they they can disappear. You don't need them. It is nice to have, as I will explain to you in a second, but they're not essential. The most essential light, the key light, the main light. Now, like I touched base in my other video, you don't want your main light or key light to be directly coming towards you and just flooding your face with light. Why is that? Because then you'll be losing a lot of shadows. And shadows is what creates depth on the face and depth is super cinematic and nice and tasty and it gives, it makes things look more 3D than flat. For example, I am creating depth in two ways, through the light on my face and through the background blur that this lens is helping generate. So if I was to uh, do this, the lighting hasn't changed at all, it's just now the background isn't as blurry, which which is it's not cool. I don't like it. It's not not as cinematic. Now you can see the background blur creating depth between the background and the subject or the foreground, which is me, and it just looks a lot better. Same goes with lights. If your light is just blowing your face over, just bloop, just illuminating everything on your face, then there's no shadows and there's no depth and there's no cinematic looking goodness. That's why I keep my key light about 45 degrees off angle, which creates loop lighting. And loop lighting is distinguishable by the little loop that is caused by your nose. That's loop lighting. Let's move on to the next light. I've also got a rim light or a back light or a hair light. It has a lot of different names, but essentially it's just a light behind you fires to onto the back of you or the back of your subject or really anything it's the backlight the rim light now why is this light important well this light's important because as you can kind of see here around my neck and my shoulders and a little bit of my hair you can see like a little glow around me making me look glowy and that is again creating depth between the background and the foreground now while I was editing my last video all I could really think about is how much better this would look if I had a rim light or backlight to separate me from the background. So for example, if I was just to go turn that light off, now you can see my hair definitely fades off into the background and my shoulder kind of just gets wrapped around and it gets lost into the background and it doesn't look as nice. You just It just doesn't look as nice. This would be more exaggerated if I was wearing something black. Okay, so now I'm wearing a black shirt and it kind of just gets lost into the background. Like my lower torso, I'm, I look like a floating head. Let's all be real, I look like a floating head. My hair is also getting lost into the background and this is why a rim light is really handy for product photography, portraits, filming, everything. It's just, it makes things look that much better. Let's go turn it back on. So now you can see the rim light doing its thing, just creating a nice little glow around my body and creating separation and depth between the foreground and background. Again, comes all the way back to depth. Depth looks great, no matter what. Just, uh, I digress. Now the third and final light that I'm using is kind of more aesthetic. It's an aesthetic light. I have the fairy light in the background, as you can clearly see, framing my head. Looks nice. I have this other light, which I just placed in the background to light up a shelf. 
So why do I have this light just lighting up a shelf? That's all, that's its one job. That's all it does. It just lights up a shelf. Well, that's a very important job because it gives context to where that light's coming from. I mean, you know I've got a light back there, but when my head's in the way, you can't really see it. And this light is just back there for your brain to make the connection that there's a light back there. That's all it is. Also, it makes my background look a little cooler. And like I said in my last video, background is also very important. So now you know the basics of lighting, the different types of lights to use and their purpose. I'll be making another video about the styles of lighting that you can use and, and how to get cool lighting effects and get creative with your lights. So hit that like button. No, what do they do? You hit the subscribe button, you smash the like button. Is that what YouTubers tell you to do? I'm not really sure. Just do the things that all YouTubers tell you to do and I'll uh, see you in the next one. Cool. <laughs> Oh god, I hope that was a good take. That was a 16 minutes, not bad.